Welcome to 2024, a year I hope we get some answers into some of the big questions that we've been seeking. As you know, for years I've been studying what really happened at Rendlesham Forest. It's still a jigsaw of these fascinating, tantalizing individual pieces that don't quite all fit together. But we're getting there. And today I'm going to look at a piece that I didn't think was related, but actually is. And that's the bizarre story of the Marconi scientist's death. Ooh, how's that related to Rendlesham Forest? Stick with me. I'm sure most of you know the very unfortunate story where British Marconi computer scientists appear to all commit suicide in bizarre ways in a very short period. This was never fully explained. The British government and Marconi themselves put it down to male suicide. So let's talk about that. It's a fact that the majority of suicides are men. It sadly is true that us males have a very different way of dealing with stress. We don't talk about things, we don't share things, we tend to bottle up our emotions. And when we as men are criticised in a work environment, we don't talk about it, but it's like a ratchet. Every criticism, every bit of complaint against us ratches up another notch, winds up a spring until men tend to break and take their own lives. And that was the conclusion to the bizarre Marconi scientist's death. It was just statistically normal. Uh, it wasn't. Every single one of those scientists who died died in bizarre ways. And I'm not going to go through a kind of a, a report of how they died, but I tell you, many of their deaths were weird and gruesome. So let's use a technique which I use all the time. Look at the big picture. The government and Marconi's conclusion were they were just suicides, male suicides caused by stress. Well, hang on. That needs investigating. Was there a middle or upper management at Marconi at the time that was causing so much stress on, say, getting things done or working on a project that caused these people to kill themselves? In my opinion, that would affect national security. These were top-end scientists. But if you've been following this story over the years, you know everything that I've just said is pretty well known. But what I'm going to tell you now is not well known. One of the widows of the dead men made a very strange statement that resonated with me in relation to Randlesham Forest. Hopefully I've now got your undivided attention. What she said was this. Her husband, who's a very conventional computer scientist working on normal physics and general defense contracts, started complaining that he was asked to work on something she described as unscientific, bizarre, out of the ordinary, under immense pressure. That could mean anything. That could mean stress at work or working on a project that was a little strange and they didn't like it. But I think what she said is very true. So let's roll back the time dilation clock and look at another jigsaw piece in the Rendlesham Forest case, and that's Cobra Mist. Cobra Mist, an over-the-horizon radar bouncing RF signals off the ionosphere looking for Doppler shifts in the Soviet Union of missiles being launched. It was a sister station to a fully functioning Cobra Mist type over-the-horizon radar on the east coast of the US. The one built at Orford Ness should just work, but it didn't. That's what you're told publicly. But that's not the full picture. Cobra Mist was not just an over-the-horizon radar. It was, in fact, a quantum leap, a massive new shift into new technology called phased array radar. Most radar dishes move around laterally or vertically, sending out a beam and looking for a return. Phased array is a fixed antenna, often in pyramid shapes. Look at this one and look at this one. Instead of steering the dish, you can electronically steer the beam from all the segments which are transmitters and receivers. 
it was very fast and very sophisticated. And that's what they were experimenting at Cobra Mist with. And during mine and John Burroughs and James Warrow's investigation into Rendlesham Forest, we also discovered that Sizewell A nuclear power station was the power source of advanced physics, specifically linking Cobra Mist to an unbelievable power source. Sizewell A apparently had a government military switch area with a big interconnect down to Orford Ness, down to Cobra Mist and onto Bordsea and over to Martlesham. The whole output power of Sizewell A nuclear power station could be fed into Cobra Mist if required. And that was serious amounts of power many, many megawatts. And I was contacted by a television repairman. What's he got to do with Cobra Mist? Oh, very interesting. The amount of power that Cobra Mist was transmitting was causing arcing and potentially house fires in the village of Orford and in the surrounding area. So to this day, you can go and look at an antenna on people's roof and see a Ministry of Defence choke, hopefully saving the house from bursting into flames as all this energy was picked up by their UHF television aerial on the roof. The power levels were immense. Because of the nature of the frequencies transmitted by Cobra Mist, unusual frequencies, high power frequencies, there was a parallel US biological study at Orford Ness, at Cobra Mist, inside the building, in its own laboratory, looking at the human and life effects. How do I know that story? It was told to me by somebody who ran a garden centre in Suffolk. So Cobra Mist did not work in the conventional sense, although they were using it to do other experiments. But it was failing in its over-the-horizon radar role. I think it was probably compromised by Soviet espionage and blocking. But at the time, the US Air Force and the British MOD who ran it didn't know. So they brought in a team of consultants. Now, everybody says that team was run by Stanford Research International. Um, it wasn't entirely. There was actually university people. There was people from the MOD, the US Air Force, from GEC Marconi, and this SRI, who are SRI? Stanford's research are the Thunderbirds. They are called in when things go horribly wrong. They are cleared to access very government classified projects. SRI and the others looked at Cobra Mist's problems and for some bizarre reason said, you need to switch it off today and never switch it on again. How do I know that? Well, because it was in the Eastern Daily Press, the Norwich newspaper. British technicians who worked there, keeping it going, went to work the next day and were told it was closed down. They opened an employment complaint saying they should have been given a month's notice. And that's how it got into the public domain that Cobra Mist was closed down, switched off immediately and never switched on again. Uh, why? And that's where I heard in my research from a Suffolk Garden Nursery, really. They had their eyes on these exotic plants that were all over the Cobra Mist facility. As Cobra Mist had been suddenly closed, they thought they could go in and take these American exotic shrubbery and sell them in the garden centre. But when they went to the Cobra Mist site at Orford Ness, on the very night it was first closed down, an unknown team had come and taken away all the biological samples leaving nothing. That's how I know there was research into exotic frequencies on living matter. And whatever the results was, was very secret. So what's SRI and Cobra Mist got to do with the Marconi scientist deaths? There is a possible connection. After Cobra Mist was closed down, for some bizarre reason, and I don't know how it was funded, SRI stayed on in Suffolk. Uh, why? To answer that, I'm going to prove to you today that they were really still there. There was an SRI off-limits laboratory at US Air Force Bentwaters and a laboratory four miles to the east at Marshallsham Heath in the supposedly GPO research lab. So that raises two questions. One, what was it the SRI was so scared of that they advised the MOD and the US Air Force to close down Cobra Mist immediately and never switch it on again? And what was it that they stayed to investigate 
The answer is very secret and very difficult to research. I have a personal friend who used to work for SRI, who I just asked as a favor to tell me what he knew about Cobra Mist. He kindly said he would look into it for me, although it was nothing to do with him as long before his time, and I never heard back from him. There was something special that kept SRI in the Suffolk area. SRI advised the US and the UK military about something very strange, something that needed further investigation and possibly could be weaponized. And there is an enormous clue to what that actually was from the Rendlesham Forest witnesses. I have personally never had so much vitriol thrown at me by people who disagree with my assessment of Rendlesham Forest. And I think in some ways they're right because I got a number of things wrong and so did they. There are two enormous camps in the RFI incident. The Jim Penstone triangular craft UFO binary code sending coordinates into his head about aliens building the pyramids of Giza and people like me saying it was a human weaponization experiment. Both of us are right and both of us are wrong. What Jim Penstone saw, the triangular craft and messages into his brain, is real. What John Burroughs saw, lights in the sky and an energy field which wrapped around him and damaged his heart and his DNA, is also true. The very nature of what those two brave, loyal service personnel were exposed to actually opens the door to revealing the truth. Humans are affected by high level ionizing and non-ionizing radiation frequencies. That was one of the things they were researching at Cobra Miss. So Jim Penstone and John Burroughs are both correct because they saw something that they thought was real. Exposure to highly strange phenomenon affects our sense of perception, messes with our minds. And in my humble opinion, SRI knew all about it. They continued the investigation into a strange force of nature that could be weaponized to affect humans. Could that bizarre, non-conventional science be what was really upsetting the Marconi scientists? Was the widow of the deceased Marconi computer investigator correct in passing on what her husband had told her, that the project he had been asked to work on by Marconi went against all his training, all his physics, and the stress of an unknown science and the pressure from above caused him to take his own life. Or had they cracked it? Had they actually understood how to harness the powers of the highly strange as a weapon. And during the Cold War, the Soviet Union and the KGB killed them all. Happy New Year, folks. Hopefully I've raised for you lots of big questions that in 2024 we can begin to find answers to because the truth is still out there. Mm -hmm.